Does the Bible show that Elohim has given us the ability to stop sinning? You see, you hear a lot of people today, they say, you know, we can't stop sinning. And I know most of us here know we can. But I just wanted to talk about people say, we can't stop sinning. We're going to sin. We can't keep the law. So, you know, why even try? We're just going to sin. That's just the way it is, right? Right? We can't stop sinning. Everyone is going to sin. And so then we, then we get into this doctrines of once saved, always saved, where we have the best of both worlds. I can sin and just do whatever I feel like it, but yet still get into the kingdom of heaven. Right? So that's, that's what I want to talk about. First of all, let's define sin. Defend, I mean, sin is, is defined as transgression of the law. We see that in 1 John 3, 4. If you guys want to turn with me there. First John chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So whenever we sin, we're transgressing the law that most people say is done away with. But we're transgressing it. So, now, one of the scriptures they use, and they, they are misinterpreted, I should say, is in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, where it says that if you say you are without sin, the truth is not in you. So from this they say, well, see, everyone has sin. We're all going to sin. You can't stop sinning. So, you know. Therefore, that means that we cannot do it. Why even try, right? Well, does that truly mean what they claim it means? Does the Bible really show from this one verse that we as believers are expected to sin because in this life we don't have the power to keep the law and stop sinning? Should we expect to always have active sin in our lives and claim sin as something that we'll always have with us in this life? Well, let's look at the verse in the proper context. Okay, let's, let's start at, at 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. Is everyone there? If you're there, say aye. Now, John says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, with the Son, Yeshua, the Messiah. Now, I want you to, to make a note that he says, and that which we have seen and heard. In other words, he personally heard this. Amen? From the Master. Okay? And he's sharing it with us. And these things write, uh, write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that Elohim is light. And in him is no darkness at all. In other words, there's no sin in Elohim. He's pure. There's no variance in Elohim. No darkness whatsoever, right? That's what it says, right? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. So obviously, what we do does matter, right? Okay? Uh, John is addressing religious people within the church, okay, who were uh, erroneously claiming that to enjoy, they were claiming that they enjoyed a close relationship to a father Yahweh, yet it was very clear that their life was characterized by sin. Did you guys hear me? These were people that claimed to enjoy a good relationship with Yeshua the Messiah, but their life you can look at it and see was clearly a sinful life. Okay? So, so John is, is, is uh, he's not saying that these people can't help but sin or stop sinning. He's not saying that they can't keep the law. He's saying that to live this way and claim to have a good relationship with the Father, 
is impossible. So obviously, what we do as far as how we live and being in a good relationship with the Messiah does matter. So let's go to verse 7. But if we, if, I want you to make a note of that, underline that in your mind. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yeshua Messiah, his son, cleanses us from, from some sin? All sin. So there's a conditional thing here. It's conditional. If we walk in the light as who's in the light? As Yeshua is in the light. Then his blood, we have blessed Sister Becky Michelle, cleanses us from all all sin. Amen? Okay, so, so obviously now because of Yeshua's cleansing work on Calvary, we can't be without sin. But John says this is conditional. If we're, clean, if we're cleansed, obviously we don't have any more sin with us, right? Right? But he says this is conditional. We are only forgiven if we confess in agreement with Elohim. Hallelujah. About our sins and repent from transgressing the law and walk in the law, keeping it as Yeshua walked. Right? In other words, walk in the law or walk in the light as Yeshua walked. We must walk as he does. Isn't that what it says? All right. So in verse 8, John continues to talk about Yahweh's people who are in denial deceiving themselves from seeing the truth right before their eyes and, and they continue to walk in darkness but yet they profess good relationship with Elohim okay so John goes on to say if we say and, and John's very nice you know you'll find in the, in the scripture a lot of the prophets um, uh, you know uh, when they talk about the, the prophets were righteous men and holy men of Yahweh but when they talked about Yahweh's people, they said we. They included themselves. We, like sheep, have all gone astray. You know? Right? You know? So John is very personable. He says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Nine. If we, but then he goes on, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from some unrighteousness, all righteousness. And obviously, once we're cleansed from all unrighteousness, then we can say, right? We, we, we are without sin because he cleansed our sins, right? Right? So he's, talk, he's not talking uh, with, you know, or what a lot of people want, want him to say, you know? They want him to say that, you know, we, we, we're going to have sin and that's, we're, we can't stop sinning. And so, so therefore, you know... But we in Yeshua can walk in the light. We're, we can walk with him who's only in the light, in him who is no sin, who, in him who is no darkness. And we can do that because of what he's done. Amen on, on Calvary, right? Hallelujah. So verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, I want you to remember that John in verse 3 says that he has given us a message to the unrepentant, and that he's given us a message to the unrepentant saints that he had already heard in person from Yeshua himself. Now, I looked at my center column in my Bible, and it referred back to John chapter 9. So if you want to hold your spot there and go back to John chapter 9, verse 16. This is a normal John. Uh, just go back to John chapter 9, verse 16. Does everyone there say I? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Now, this, is, this here is when the, there was a blind man. Yeshua, white mud on his eyes. He was blind from birth. And, and basically, he, he, he regained his sight. And the, the Pharisees are all upset about this because, you know, they didn't feel this was right. So, verse 16, therefore says some of the Pharisees, this man is not of Elohim. They're talking about Yeshua. Because he keepeth not uh, 
the Sabbath day. Others said, how can this man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. See, the, there was these Pharisees were blind. They, they, they themselves, they, they refused to see the truth that was right before their face. And, it, and some of them did see it. And there was division among the Pharisees themselves because, because the evidence was so clear. This man was doing miracles, miracles that were, were healing and, and, and restoring people's sight. And, they, and, and even amongst themselves, they argued, I, I, you know, I don't think he is a sinner. How can he be a sinner if he's doing these? And some say he is a sinner because he's not keeping the Sabbath, which we all know that's true. That's not true. Yeshua never transgressed the law, much more the Sabbath or, not, or anything in that way. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. So, so, the, so the, therefore, so, um, uh, where was I at? Okay, 15. Then said the Pharisees who asked him, wait a minute, uh, where am I at? Up here. Um, okay, um, yeah, 16 or uh, 17. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him, asked them, saying, Is your son, who you who ye say was born blind, how then doth he now see? His parents answered him and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now see if we know not? For who hath opened his eyes? We know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words spake, the, spake his parents. They feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was, that Yeshua, speaking of Yeshua, that he was the Messiah, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give Elohim the praise. Because we know that this man, speaking of Yeshua, is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, and now I see. Then said they to him again, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already. He told them about the mud on the eyes. And, he, and ye did not hear. Therefore, would ye hear it again? Well, will ye also be his, his disciples? Uh, so you see, he's telling them off a little bit. Then he, they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that Elohim speaks, sp spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, why herein is, is a, a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that Elohim heareth not sinners. Now this is the blind man talking to them. I mean, making perfect sense. Now we know that the, the Elohim don't hear, doesn't hear sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of Elohim and doeth his will, him he heareth. <laughs> Or an ex-blind man, I should say. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened open the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of Elohim, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Yeshua heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the son of Elohim? And he answered and said, Who is he, master, that I might believe on him? And Yeshua said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talks to you. And he said, Master, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Yeshua said, For judgment I am come into the world, that they which see not might see and that they would see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees that were with him 
heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Yeshua said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. So you see, this is the reference that, that John was talking about. He was talking to people in the church, just, just like the Pharisees, religious people, who were hypocritical, people who, who were, whose, whose lives, who had the truth right before them, and, and, but they, they, they were in denial. They were blind to the fact that they were living in sin, but yet they professed to have good relationship with, with the Father. These Pharisees thought they had good relationship with Father Yahweh, but they were blind to the very clear evidence that was right before them. A simple uh, man that was once blind could see, but they who could, who could see could not see because they were in denial of the truth and refused. And so therefore Yeshua said that your, their sin was still with them because they were unrepentant, right? Right? They were, they were in, in unrepentance. And so, so this is what this, if we say we have not sinned, he's talking about people who, who, are, who are clearly in denial about something they need to repent of. Amen? He's talking about people who refuse. And, and, and like the Pharisees, they, they, they believed they, they weren't sinning. He says, we, 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 and they were making and calling Yeshua a liar. Hallelujah. And so, so John, hallelujah, is, is, is basically trying to tell these people they need to repent for, for their sins. Now, I want you to know something, that the best deceptions are based upon or related to truth. In other, in other words, the people, when they, when they say something that is deceptive, it, it, there's truth, there's partial truth in it, but it's twisted in a way that creates error. So the people who say about believers uh, that, that they ha are going to have sin, they can't stop sinning, there's, you know, they can't keep the law, they're partially true. And, 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 they're what, they're, and they're what they're talking about is, is us who, before we were saved. They're talking about us before we had Yeshua in our lives and when we were the old man and we were alone and, and, and trapped in our sins but they're misapplying this you know this to to us after we're saved because after we say we can do all things right through Yeshua strength us after we're saved we can walk in the light as he is in the light even as he is right right now they they you know these, these people, hallelujah, they're talking about the old man that, was, that is the enemy of Elohim. The old man that was, that, uh, which is our flesh, that is not subject to the, to the law of Yahweh, neither can be. But from the moment we are saved, we are no longer alone. Hallelujah. We are with Yeshua, who is the one, who is our example of the first fruit of us who is without sin, who never knew sin. Amen? So therefore, we can do all things through him. We enter a new way of living in Messiah. I want to encourage you. We enter a, a, a way in which El Elohim has made that enables us indeed. He requires us to become more and more like the one who never transgressed the law, which is Yeshua. Matter of fact, look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29. And, and you'll, you'll see something very interesting. If you turn there real quick. If you're there, say I. It says, but ye are in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of Elohim dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Elohim, he is none of his, excuse me, not, not, not Romans chapter 8, verse 9, verse 29. Sorry about that, guys. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknown, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image 
of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So in Elohim, in Elohim's new creation program, Yahweh intends for us to be as his son. He fully expects us to go away from being the old fleshly man, the sinners that we once was, and to grow and become new holy creations of righteousness, law-abiding people. Amen? Now, you don't have to turn there, but Ephesians 4.15 says, But speaking the truth in love may, may grow, talking about us, up into him. Who's him? Yeshua. In all things, even... So in all things, you say some things or all things. So that in all things means that even in the way that Yeshua walked, not transgressing the law, we may grow into that. Amen? Into him. Which is the head, even Messiah. So this is, I want you guys to know, it's not something that is, oh, happens after our, our, our earthly bodies die and we go to heaven. This is supposed to happen as we live on this earth. Amen? Hallelujah. As, as we have this existence on earth, so that when Yeshua finally returns, we're already a bride without spot or wrinkle. Amen? Hallelujah. We're already uh, not transgressing the law. Because when he finds us, he will find us in loving obedience to the law of the spirit of life in Yeshua. Right? Hallelujah. So we are kept by his spirit and we are caused to be holy even as he is holy. Because Yeshua have said, Yahweh have said that you are, must be holy even as I am holy. Right? Right? Is that what he says in 1 Peter 1? You don't have to turn it, but that's what he said. He says, you must be holy even as I am holy. So, so, Basically, he's talking about us in all our ways, in our conversation, you know, and in, in, in how we think. And he's talking about even our bodies he's talking about. Amen? Because our bodies right now, we're in temporary bodies, bodies that will see corruption. But he wants us, but just because Father Yahweh knows that we're in bodies that, are, that will see corruptions in the sense that they will die and, and, and grow old and, and wear out and eventually turn to dust. Don't you believe that the Heavenly Father doesn't expect us to keep our, 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 our bodies, which are the temple of the Holy Spirit, don't you believe that He doesn't expect us to keep it holy and righteous as the temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you believe that He, that he doesn't expect us to, to, even our bodies, you know, honor Him with our bodies? Amen? Until He comes again and gives us a, a permanent body. He, amen. That's what he'll reward us with a permanent body that, that, that will not see corruption, a spiritual body. But in the meantime, we must keep this temporary body, this, whole, this, this, this temple of, of the Holy Spirit. We must keep it righteous and honored. But matter of fact, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6, if you, if you look at that, uh, we'll start with verse 19. Yeah, verse 19, and tell me when you get there, say hi. Verse 19, it says, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, What? Know you not that, you are the bo that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which ye have of Elohim, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore... What should we do with our body? Glorify Elohim in your body and in your spirit, which are Elohim's. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Elohim expects to find us holy and acceptable without spot or wrinkle until he comes to claim his bride. Then we will be like him in the end. We will be like him not only, like we're supposed to be like him now, in his, in his earthly realm, in our, in our inward man, and in our spirit. Amen? And in our heart, and in our mind. But then, he's going to give us a new body, and we'll be like him 
and, and, and like he, as he is now after he resurrected, having an incorruptible body, a pure body, a spiritual body. Amen? So we'll be like him totally, both inside and outside then. But in order to be like him totally then, we must be like him now. Amen? New creations. Just like Yeshua was as a man on earth. We must be new creations without sin. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. So it's very clear from these implications of the scriptures we just read, it screams that, it, that we in this life are expected to be like Yeshua. And then, of course, of necessity, then we must, like Yeshua, be given the power to avoid sin. Right? Amen? In order for us to be in this life to become like the one who never transgressed the law, Elohim has set up a surefire system in which we are fully equipped, just like his son, our example, to live on this earth and not sin. The first and most important step in creating us in a non-transgressing image of Messiah is he erased our sinful past and heritage. Right? When we, before we were saved, we had a heritage for the first Adam that we would die in condemnation to sin. And, and, we, and we were locked in to sin and, and we could not. We were enemies of, of, of the law. We could not live up and keep the character of Yahweh. But at Calvary, when we first become converted, he erased, he justified us, right? He erased our, 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 you know, all our past sins. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, because I, I, I guess I got to take you there. T go to Romans 3, 35. I'm going to be shooting around as usual, so follow me. Okay, Romans 3, 35. You guys there? Say aye. 25, my fault. 325. Whom Elohim have set forth to be a propitiation, that means to be, a, you know, uh, an atonement or a covering or, 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 or a sacrifice for our sins through faith in his blood, that blood that we talked about earlier, to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of Elohim. So when we first get saved, he takes care of all of our past sins. He wipes out our, our history, our inheritance, how we inherited uh, sin. He takes care of that. In, in Elohim's eyes, we, we are justified, right? Justified. And so, in other words, in Elohim's eyes, he has taken our sins and he has thrown them into the sea of forgetfulness. And it's just as if, if you know, we, we say justified, just as if we never sinned or I'd never sinned. Therefore, we, just like his son, we, we, he sees us just as a son, as a person who has never sinned. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we are brethren of Messiah. We are, we are uh, fruits after him who was the first of our kind. So but Father Yahweh didn't just leave the cure to our sin disease there, you know? He said in Acts that we must repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and then we shall receive the Holy Spirit. So after our sins are gone, our past sins, you know, he gives us the Holy Spirit. And this leads to the second and equally important step which is the reason for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells us in order that we might have a pure heart, a new heart, which is the opposite of the heart that the old man had. The old man had a fleshly heart that, was, that did not want to be subject to the law of Yahweh, and indeed neither could be. The new man has a heart that is compatible, that is compatible with the law of Yahweh, and is not only desires to be subject to the law, but indeed can be. 
This is a heart that loves Elohim and keeps his commandments, desires to keep his commandments. This is, the, this is the heart and the makeup of a new man through the Holy Spirit. This is why new man Christians like, like Messiah can avoid transgressing the law. Because Elohim has given us a freedom to even think like our Messiah. Do you know that? We have the freedom before we weren't free. But now in Yeshua who sets us free and free indeed, now we have the freedom to not sin because we have the freedom to think as your Messiah thinks about sin. Amen? Hallelujah? Matter of fact, we, we can renew our minds to, be ha to the point of having the same mind as Messiah. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 2, 16. If you want to, or if you don't want to, just listen to me. I'll read it to you. For It says, For who hath known the mind of, of the Master, that he may instruct him? But it says, But we have, have is present tense, right now in this life, we have the mind of Messiah. Amen? 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that inspiration, or the Holy Spirit, uses all scripture to perfect us in our mind and our thinking and to perfect us and make help us to become the perfect man, which is Yeshua the Messiah. In other words, what was all scripture that, 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 that Paul and him was referring to? It was Torah, the law. Torah simply means instruction. So the Holy Spirit takes the Bible and helps us to renew our mind. It gives us a brand new heart, you know, a, way, a brand new thinking. Matter of fact, it gives us takes us away from the thinking of the old man to the thinking of the, of the new man, Yeshua. Amen? Praise Yahweh. So now we think differently about people, places, and things. We become a new creation that is guided to all truth by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So now, if we study to show ourselves approved, we will grow in his grace. We will grow and we will become more and more in the knowledge of, of Yeshua the Messiah to the point where Father Yahweh will, will make us exactly as Yeshua is. Father Yahweh will basically give us grace as we journey on his way. He will give us knowledge as we journey on his way to the point where he says he wants us to keep and hold on to it. He's going to hold us responsible to the, with the knowledge and grace that he gives us. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, I want you to know that worshipers, true worshipers, are, are people who worship him in spirit and in truth. And the Holy Spirit, his job is to lead us all truth, is the spirit of truth. So you can't have spirit worship in spirit and truth separated. Because since the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, we're going to worship him in truth. And the truth is the law. The truth is his instruction. So when people who say that we as Christians can't keep the law, or we can't stop sinning, or we can't, you know, uh, do this or can't do that, they need to open their eyes to see the truth that the Holy Spirit has shown and admit the wrong. They're trying to apply to us new man Christians the law of the sin and death. They're trying to say that we, after we're saved, are still under the law of sin and death. But, but I don't know about you, but I hear Romans chapter 8 that says that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Yeshua, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Yeshua has set us free from the law of sin and death, Right? So we, unlike the old man, are set free from the laws and the death. We're no longer bond in bondage to these things. So we don't have to operate, you know, within the confines of sin. We operate with Yeshua as opposed to separate from him. So it's, it, it, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of evidence in Scripture 
Matter of fact, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2. That shows that we are expected to live non-law transgression, transgressing lives. Ephesians chapter 2. Turn with me there and let me know, know if you get there. Are you there? Say aye. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you have he quickened, talking about us believers, who were dead, past tense, and trespasses and sin, wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. See, in times past, we were disobedient to the, to the law and were not subject to it, nor, nor wanted to be. Past tense. Three, among whom also we all had our conversation, our way of, of, of life. In times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. This is in times past. But Elohim, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us. He's, done, he's changed us. He's done something to us. To, you know, together with Messiah. We are together with Messiah. And this is his grace, something we don't deserve. He gave us this, 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 this quickening, he put us together with Messiah and, and gave us his great salvation from what? From sin, from the law of sin and death. And have raised us up together, raised us up with Yeshua and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Messiah Yeshua. We're seated with him. That in the, in, in the, presently, in this life and in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kingdom toward us through Yeshua Messiah. For by grace we are, ye are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. He did it. He set up this, 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 this ability in us. It is the gift of Elohim, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? For we are his workmen, created in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen? Unto what? Unto good works. That's the law. See? Which Elohim hath before ordained that we should walk in it. There is an expectation that we are to walk in keeping, in, 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 in keeping the law and not in transgressing it. Amen? From Elohim. Amen? Praise Yahweh. So, we see that it keeps saying in times past, in times past, maybe four or five times, that we are expected to live in non-law transgressing lives. So since Elohim has done all these things, we can indeed show scripturally that we have been equipped with the Holy Spirit power and the mind of Yeshua to, like him, prevent ourselves from transgressing the law. Romans chapter 6 says this very loud and clearly. Matter of fact, I'll turn there real quick. Romans 6. Just bear with me. 6 chapter 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto Elohim through Yeshua the Messiah or Elohim. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Elohim as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Elohim. For sins shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law of sin and death, or the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. He gave us something we don't deserve, this ability to be seated with Yeshua 
at, at, at the Father's right hand. And the same ability we are to walk in the light even as he is in the light. Amen? Do you hear me? Or are you guys falling asleep on me out there? <laughs> Amen? I want to encourage you guys that we don't have to sin. If, you, if you're encouraged, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. So it says, what then shall we sin? Verse 15. Because we are not under the law, but under grace. In other words, shall we transgress the law? Because we're not under the law, but under grace? Elohim forbid. Remember, sin is, the definition of sin is transgression of the law, right? Forbid, Yahweh forbid that we should transgress the law just because we're not under the law, right? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to, to you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But Elohim be thanked that we are the servant, that we were, past tense, the servant of sin. You see the expectation? But ye have obeyed from the heart with the new heart we have, that form of doctrine, that instruction, that Torah, which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Amen. I, he says, I want to say, I speak in the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye, ye have yielded your members, servants, to un uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto, unto wholeness. For ye were the servants of sins, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had, had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and becoming servants to Elohim, ye have your fruit unto holiness, being holy even as he is holy, right? And the end everlasting life, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Elohim is eternal life through Yeshua the Messiah. So I want you to know that Yeshua has, has, has given us a cure for our sin problem. I want you to know that we don't have to sin. We can walk in the light. We have the power of the Holy Spirit that, that helps us to walk in the light. And, and we can do the law. When people try to tell us that we cannot do it, accomplish the law. The Bible tells us the opposite. It expects us to do the law. Amen? It says loud and clear. This is so true. For we, we, we looked at we can look at 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. I'm coming to an end here. Stay with me. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. If you're there, say aye. But as he which have called you is holy, right? So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, as I spoke before, be ye holy as I am holy. We can see it um, in Romans 8, 3, where it tells us that, it actually tells us that, that we are to accomplish or, or, or fulfill the law. Amen? Look it up. It's there. And, we, and so and, and to, and if you look up in the Strong's, the Greek, to accomplish means to do or to complete the law in our lives. We can look at Romans 2.13. Actually, matter of fact, I'll, I'll turn there, and I'll have you turn right there with me, because it says it right here. Romans 2.13. It tells us, in Romans 2.13, are you there? Say aye. It says there, Romans 2.13. I can't hear you say I. I guess you're not there. Okay. All right. All right. Romans 2, 3, it says, But not the hearer of the law are just before Elohim, but the what? Of the law 
shall be justified. Amen? Is it, does it get any clearer than that, people? This is the difference between those who are uh, of the old man or under the law of sin and death and those who are in the law of spirit of, of Yeshua, you know, of life in Yeshua. This is the big difference. It's a very significant difference. Unlike the old man, the new man will, will never willfully transgress the law. Hebrews tells us that if we willfully transgress the law, we, we have, the old man, you know, has a certain looking fiery, fearful looking forward to a, a fiery, you know, end. There is no more sacrifice for that person. But we are not of the old man, right? Matter of fact, the Bible tells, he takes it a little further. It tells us that the new man, which is in the life of Yeshua, the law of the spirit of life of Yeshua, cannot sin if it, as long as he's walking in the spirit. As, you know, matter of fact, Galatians, you don't have to turn there, says as long as you walk in the spirit, which is the same thing as saying walk in the light, right? You will not fulfill the deeds of the flesh. Okay? Because I want you to know that though we've died to our flesh, the old man, it continues to, stri to strive to, to resurrect itself. You know? And it, and it does this through the temptations of the world. This world that's ruled by Satan. So we must live willing as sacrifices, as living sacrifices, the Bible tells us. Right? And we must die daily. Matter of fact, Paul says in 1 Corinthians that he does die daily. And how do we die daily, you ask? We die daily by walking in the Spirit and not fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Amen? The old man keeps, says, oh, there's a temptation there. I'm dead. I, I want to come to life. Uh, get it. And the devil's on the outside of you working and saying, say, here, you know, give into this temptation. And, and every time you, you deny your flesh, and say, no, you're dying, and you're living as a, as, a, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your due service unto him. Your due service is not to transgress the law, not to give in to sin, because the Bible says in John, or James, that when we, we sin, when we are drawn away, drawn away from what? From walking in the spirit, walking in the light. And we, we, that's, that's when we send it, into, tempta into temptation and into the, the lust and desires of our flesh. You know, and then when that is, that is carried forth, it leads to death. Amen? That's the final. But see, we don't want to feed or give in or, or resurrect our old man by, by giving in to its desires and stuff. Because the old man's place leads to death and destruction. And we, the Bible says, are not debtors to the flesh, that which is our old man, but debtors to the spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. So don't be double-minded. Don't, don't be trying to walk it sometimes like some people do. Some, most people in the church walk in the flesh, mainly. And every now and then slip into this, the walking in the spirit. And the hallelujah, they have a hallelujah time for that brief moment, right? And then it's back to business as usual. As a new man, we are supposed to mainly walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And not transgress the law. And every now and then, we may not willfully, we may accidentally slip up into the flesh. And, to, and fall to temptation. And the Bible says... If we sin, we are, are faithful, and he, he is faithful and true to forgive us, amen, and restore us as long as we, we confess and agree with Elohim about our sin and continue to be in him. But we don't have to sin, people, amen? There's many more scriptures I can give you guys, but I just want you to know that the expectation is for, of Yeshua is for us to move forward and ceasing to transgress the law. 
When someone tells you that it doesn't matter what we do because we all are going to sin and can't stop, tell them they're right. Tell them it doesn't matter what we do towards our sin problem outside of Yeshua. But in Yeshua, in the law of the spirit of life of Yeshua, what we do does matter. Because of what he's done on Calvary, we have no excuses to willfully and actively sin. We will be without excuse. The Bible tells us if, if, if the person who has tasted of the gift, who is, who's been, you know, justified and cleansed by the Spirit, if you willfully sin after that, there is no more transgression for, I mean, no more sacrifice for you. So, us in the law of the Spirit, life Yeshua, He has given us all we need to stop sinning and be without sin. Yahweh bless. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah.